Namaste. Good morning. Uh, we're going to do a class this morning about Udana energy. We talked last week, or the last couple of weeks, about the idea of prana, which is our energy that moves up and out and gathers and brings sensations, information, foods, stuff into the body, and the power of Atana, which moves down and empties us out as appropriate, and Samana in the middle, when, those, when we reverse those two tendencies by breathing with intention, um, then we nurture our center. Um, a fourth sort of energy that we have in the body is called Udana, and it's an extension upward, which starts in the throat and rises up towards the crown of the head. And it has the power, the Yoga Sutras tell us, well, first, before I say that, let me just say, um, it has to do with our ability to communicate with each other, our ability to be uplifted in various ways, our highest aspirations, our highest, our highest self, um, intellectual, and even at a higher level, spiritual uplift and endeavors. Uh, so when this sort of energy is nourished, um, then we can have um, the ability to levitate, in fact. We can become so light that we levitate, and um, this is something that's known um, in, to, to saints of all sorts of traditions. People get very light when they have very high faith. Um, and we also can have the power to rise above water, mud, and thorns. This is Sutra 339, which is quite interesting. Um, Patanjali doesn't illustrate much, but very um, descriptive here. We can rise above water, mud, and thorns, which I take to mean literally we can if we happen to be levitating or walking on water because our faith is so high. We won't be coming in contact with those things. We can also take it um, to mean uh, to be a referral to the gunas of tamas, anything that makes us heavy, water and earth are both heavy elements, so anything that drags us down, makes us heavy, makes us sad, makes us um, very earthbound, or even kind of rolling around in the dirt like mudslinging, um, so that's tamas, water and dirt, um, and thorns, anything that aggravates us, pokes us, makes us irritated, creates pain, that's rajas. So when our udana energy is lifted, we also can rise above these two um, tendencies. We don't have to get mixed up down in the dirt of our instincts or be really aggravated by everything that's going on around us, um, which will probably be more useful for most of us than the actual power of walking on water or levitating. Um, how can we rise above the things that tangle us up um, emotionally, mentally, things that pull our energy um, down into the world rather than elevating us? So this practice will help us to rise above whatever it is that's getting you all mixed up in the mud or that's poking at you somehow. Uh, the main technique that we're going to use here is making the exhale longer than the inhale. Exhale longer than inhale. Um, when we inhale, we're just gonna think of the belly gradually softening as the breath comes in, the belly will gradually soften. When we exhale, we're gonna actively hug the belly in, and then you'll notice as you hug, then there's this lift up of the breath. So we wanna follow the breath upwards every time we exhale. Let's go down onto all fours. And over the course of six breaths, I'd like you to establish for yourself a nice, long, smooth breath, but where the exhale is longer than the inhale. So you may work with, say, inhale four, exhale six, or inhale six, exhale uh, eight, depending on what works um, for your body, the exact count. But let's find a place where we can have our exhale longer than our inhale. So we begin on all fours. Preparing for Chakra Vakasana. We're breathing through the nose. As we inhale, we're going to let the belly soften. And then with the exhale, 
Hug the belly in and move the hips back towards the heels, relaxing the neck and shoulders. So again, as you come forward and inhale, let your belly soften. Be aware of how long the breath is. Take a little pause, and then as you exhale and hug the belly, move your hips back to your heels and be aware of how long the breath is here. So again, inhale, count the breath as you come forward. Let the belly soften. Pause. Exhale, hug the belly. Count the breath as you exhale. See if you can make it longer than the inhale. And pause. Let's do that three more times. Establishing an inhale of, let's say, four or six count. Pause. And then an exhale that's slightly longer, say six or eight counts. Do that twice more on your own. Counting the length of the breath, letting the belly soften as you inhale. Take a small pause. And make your exhale longer than your inhale as you go back. Take a small pause there one more time. We'll stay for a moment in the child pose when we finish the exhale and relax the breath, relax the neck and shoulders. We're going to move into uh, Vajrasana and continue with this pattern of inhale, pause, exhale longer than inhale, pause. Let's establish this relationship. With your inhale, lift your arms, stand up tall onto the knees, pause, and then exhale, hug the belly and bend forward all the way to the floor. Let the exhale be longer than the inhale, and pause. And again, inhale, lift, let the belly soften, and pause. Hug the belly and bend down. Exhale longer than inhale. Again, inhale and lift up. Let the belly soften and pause. And hug the belly, bend down. Exhale longer than inhale. And pause three more times. Establish a good ratio for you. One more time. Belly is soft as you come up. Hug the belly as you exhale. Move a little, a little bit more slowly as you exhale because the exhale is longer than the inhale. And pause. And relax your breath. Come slowly to an upright position for a moment. Allow the breath to continue to relax. And we're going to slowly come up into a standing position, finding Samastiti. So we continue with the same bhavana of inhaling, letting the belly soften, exhaling, hugging the belly towards the spine, making the exhale a little bit longer than the inhale. And we'll put a pause after each of those cycles of the breath. We're going to begin a pattern where we move into the pose first for one breath, then for two, and then for three. Throughout all of these movements and static poses, exhale longer than inhale. Inhale four, exhale six, or inhale six, exhale eight. Moving into Uttanasana. Inhale, raise the arms forward and up, let the belly soften. Hug the belly as you exhale, bend down. Let the exhale be longer than the inhale. Come into the forward bend, legs comfortably straight, and we're going to stay for a breath. Inhale, feel the belly soften. Pause, then exhale, hug the belly. Let the exhale be longer than the inhale, and pause. 
We'll come up to the top on the inhale, float up to the top. We'll let the belly soften, pause at the top, and exhale longer than inhale as you come down the front, plugging the belly as you come down. Do that twice more. Next time we're going to stay two breaths. Inhale, arms float forward and up, belly softens. Pause, hug the belly, bend down more slowly than you raise the arm. Pause, two breaths now. Stay and inhale and soften the belly. Pause, and exhale, hug the belly. And pause again, inhale for four. Pause, and exhale for six. Pause and come up to the top on the inhale. Soften the belly and rise up to the top. And with the exhale, lower the arms down the front. We're going to move into the pose one more time and stay three breaths. I'm going to start saying inhale six and exhale eight. Um, you do what works for you. Inhale in six seconds. Soften the belly, float the arms forward and up. And pause. Exhale in eight seconds. Hold down, move a little bit more slowly, hugging the belly in, and pause. We'll stay here, three breaths. Inhale, six. Pause, and exhale, eight. Hug the belly. And pause. Again, inhale, six. Pause, and exhale, eight. And pause, one more breath here. And inhale, float to the top. Let the belly soften as you lift up. Pause at the top, hug the belly, and slowly lower the arms down in eight. Pause and relax. Keep the attention inside the body. Notice where your awareness is. The Udana energy will tend to bring our attention upward towards the crown of the head. I want to make a uh, move into Parjotanasana, asymmetrical forward bend. We'll use a a little bit of Virabhadrasana with the knee bent going into it just to make the transition a little bit softer. Um, but again, our focus is the same thing. Inhale six, exhale eight, small pause, soft belly on the inhale, and hug the belly, awareness of the breath moving up on exhale. Keeping the pelvis steady, we'll turn the right toes slightly out and step the left leg forward. If you want a wider stance for balance, feel free to do that. I'm also going to do the partial tanasana with the hands down on the floor or the leg. Um, you are free to use your hands on the back if that works better for you. With the inhale, raise the arms forward and up in six seconds as you let the belly soften and pause. We're going to exhale down into the forward bend in eight seconds, slowly straightening the left leg, folding down, hugging the belly. Hold the breath out for two. We stay for a breath. Inhale, six. Pause. And exhale, eight. Pause. Lift to the top. Inhale, raise the arms, bend the knee. Let the belly soften. And pause. Eight seconds then to lower the arms and straighten the leg.
and pause. Again, inhale in six, raise the arms, bend the knees. Belly soft and pause. Eight seconds to fold forward and straighten the legs. And pause. Two breaths this time. Inhale for six. Pause. And exhale for eight. And pause again. Inhale six. Pause and exhale eight. Pause and then lift to the top. Inhale, floating up to the top, bending the knee, letting the belly soften. And in eight seconds, lower the arms and straighten the leg. Last time, three breaths down in the forward bend. Inhale in six, raise the arms, let the belly soften, bend the knee. And pause. Bend down in eight seconds. And pause. Three breaths now. Inhale for six. Pause and exhale eight. Pause, inhale six. Pause, and exhale eight. Do one more breath like that on your own. Inhale in six, raise the arms, bend the knee, soften the belly. Pause, and exhale eight seconds to lower the arms and straighten the leg. Pause, and then relax the breath. And bring the left foot back to join the right. Align the feet in Samasthiti. Relax the breathing. Stay focused inside the body. Where does the attention move in the body? Let's take the other side, stabilize the pelvis, turn the left toe slightly out and step the right foot forward. Again, right foot a little wider if you like for a more um, steady base. Same thing, three repetitions, we'll say one, then two, then three breaths. Inhale six, exhale eight. Inhale six, raise the arms, bend the knee, let the belly soften. And pause. Exhale at eight. Slowly bend down as you straighten the leg. Pause. Let's stay one breath. Inhale six. Pause and exhale eight. Inhale, come up to the top. Pause and exhale, lower the arms down, straighten the leg in eight. Second repetition. Inhale, raise the arms, bend the knees, six counts to get up. And pause. Bend down in eight counts. And pause with the breath out for two. Inhale for six. Pause and exhale for eight. Another breath, please. Inhale six. And 
and exhale eight. Lift up to the top in six. And lower down in eight. One more repetition. Inhale six. Pause two and exhale eight. Bend forward. Pause two, three breaths down in the pose. Inhale for six. Pause and exhale eight. And pause to do two more breaths on your own. Inhale six to rise up to the top. Pause for two. And exhale in eight. Pause for two. And then relax the breath. Step back to some seat. Where is the attention? We're going to stay with this ratio. Inhale six, pause two, exhale eight, pause two, as we do six repetitions of Ardha Utkatasana, the half squat. So what's important here is that exhale is longer than inhale. Um, you can make those counts a little faster if you need to, um, and, but do please include the pauses. As you inhale, in six, raise the arms forward and up, let the belly soften. Pause two, and then as you exhale for eight, bend the knees and fold forward. And pause for two. Inhale six, lift up to the top. Pause two, and exhale at eight, lower the arms down the front. If you're hugging the belly, move slowly, and pause two with the breath out. Five more times. Inhale six, raise the arms forward and up. Pause two, and exhale at eight. Bend the knees and fold down, hugging the belly in. Hold the breath out for two. Inhale in six, lift up to the top. Pause two. And exhale in eight, slowly bring the arms down the front, hugging the belly in. Pause two. Inhale six, raise the arms. Pause two. And exhale eight. Bend the knees and fold down. And pause two. Inhale in six. Pause two. Exhale arms down the front and eight. And pause two. Three more times. Inhale six. Pause two, exhale eight, fold down. Pause two, inhale six. Pause two, exhale and eight, lower the arms. Pause two, 
last two. Two more times. Inhale, six. And pause. Exhale, eight. Pause, two. Inhale, six. Pause, two. And exhale, eight. Pause to last one on your own, please. And then relax the back. Okay, we're going to do something a little uh, unusual, which is move now into a seated position and do a short pranayama. We do have more poses to do, um, but I want to do a krama with the exhale. Krama means a segment. And we're going to start to bring awareness to the pelvic floor, to the root block in preparation for what we're gonna do next. So please find a comfortable seat. Uh, use a cushion or use a chair, either is fine. We do wanna be in a position where we can feel the sit bones well grounded because we're gonna bring awareness to the pelvic floor for a little bit here. So in addition to the action of hugging the belly towards the spine on the exhale, we can get a little bit more of this upward support effect by engaging the mula bandha, um, engaging the muscles of the pelvic floor. So as you sit, you can feel your sit bones, hopefully evenly sitting on your support. I'd also like you to be aware of your tailbone and your pubic bone. So there's four points and they're generally organized um, in a diamond shape. The pelvic floor is a series of muscles that are supported by those four points. Pubic bone in the front, sit bones on the sides, tailbone in the back. We're gonna start our exhales by actually gathering the pelvic floor and, and then lifting up into the center. The perineum will rise. And then we're gonna pause for a moment and then we're gonna do the part of the exhale where we hug the belly. So we've been working with an eight count exhale we're going to use the first four counts to gather the pelvic floor, find the root lock. We'll pause for a moment and then we'll hug the belly and feel the combined effect of those two things. We'll just do uh, six breaths like that. Let's take a moment. Uh, and in, in this case, the inhale will just be free. So no need to count the inhale. Let's take a moment to establish the breath here. Feeling the breath come in and the belly soften with the inhale. and re-linking um, your attention to the move, upward motion, the hugging of the belly towards the spine and the exhale. And see if you can come back into that eight count exhale. Now we're going to add the root lock. For the first four counts of your exhale, I'd like you to concentrate on the four points that support the swing of the pelvic floor, gathering in, and then the perineum lifting up. So four counts of exhale to do that, and then pause. And then the next four counts of the exhale to hug the belly in while you maintain that upward movement of the root lock, and then pause. And then soften when you inhale. Let the belly relax. Let the pelvic floor soften. Four counts to exhale. Engage the root lock. And pause. 
and then exhale the rest of the breath out, pull the belly in, and pause, and relax as you inhale. Exhale, gather the pelvic floor, lift the perineum for four counts, and pause, and hug the belly in for four counts, and then soften while you inhale. Let's do that three more times. Exhale in four counts, gather the pelvic floor, lift the root lock, and then pause. Maintain that as you take the next four counts to pull the belly in, and pause. Relax while you inhale. Two more times. Exhale in four, root lock engages, and pause. And then the next four counts, hug the navel into the spine, and pause. Relax with the inhales. Last one. Four counts to gather the pelvic floor. Lift the perineum root lock. And then the rest of the exhale, belly hug into the spine. Relax as you inhale. And soften the breath. We're going to use this in downward facing dog. We're going to go to downward dog as we have been doing three times, staying for one, then two, then three breaths. Um, and we're going to see if we can find that root lock. I think that it's a little bit easier to identify in the down dog. It's a good place to move, to work with it. We won't crama, but do start the exhale by gathering the pelvic floor in and then hugging the belly in. So we'll stay for one, then two, then three breaths like that. Then we're going to take a little break and then we're going to re-enter down dog and stay for six whole breaths, adding to everything that we've done, the Uddiyana Bandha, which is where we pull the belly in after the exhale and kind of suck the navel up underneath your rib cage. Um, this will be more obvious to you when you're in the downward dog position. If that doesn't work, just work with the root lock and the belly hugging to the spine. Um, so I will, of course, instruct you as we go, but that's what's coming up. Let's move on to all fours. After all, all of this, exhale longer than inhale. That's the most important, important feature. So um, if you need to redux a little bit, just go back to that. Exhale longer than inhale. We're beginning on all fours. Inhale and let the belly soften. Let the exhale move to down dog. Raise the hips towards the ceiling. You can keep the knees bent if you'd like. We're staying for one breath. So inhale, let the belly soften. With the exhale, stay here. Gather the pelvic floor, hug the belly into the spine. Pause. Inhale for six. Let the belly soften. Again, exhale at eight. Gather the pelvic floor, hug the belly in. Pause, and then inhale the knees to the floor in six counts. At eight counts, go to child's pose for a moment. Inhale in six, rise to all fours. Eight counts to get to downward facing dog. Two breaths will stay this time. Inhale for six, let the belly soften. Pause, exhale at eight. Gather the pelvic floor, hug the belly to the spine. Pause, stay again with inhale, let the belly soften. Pause, and then exhale at eight. Gathering the pelvic floor, pulling the navel towards the spine. and pause. Inhale the knees to the floor. Pause. And exhale in eight counts. Move to child's pose. 
and five. Inhale, six, rise up to all fours. Pause. Exhale, eight, downward facing dog. Inhale for six, let the belly soften. Exhale at eight, root lock, hug the belly. Pause, inhale for six. Pause and exhale, eight count. Pause, one more breath, inhale, six. Pause, and exhale, eight. Pause, inhale, six to lower the knees. Pause, and exhale, eight, from your hips to your heels. And take a moment, resting in child's pose, relaxing the breath. We are going to return to downward facing dog and stay for six breaths. If that's too long, please do two segments of three or just do what is possible and then take a rest in child's pose. And we're going to add, if everything is going okay so far, we're going to add the Uddiyana Bandha, the upward flying lock. If it's too much, just stay with exhale longer than inhale. That's fine. That will still give you the um, the effect of the energy moving upwards. So in the Uddiyana Bandha, after you exhale, you hold the breath out a little bit longer and you hug your belly button in towards your spine and lift it up underneath your rib cage. Let's take six counts to lift up onto all fours. And pause for two. Exhale and eight, downward facing dog. Pause, and we're going to start our breath. Inhale for six, let the belly soften. Pause and exhale for eight. Now when you pause with the breath out, plug your navel up towards your spine, suck it up under your rib cage. Take a moment. Relax that, then inhale and soften the belly. Five more times. Exhale, root lock, belly to spine. Pull the breath out. Pull the belly button up underneath your ribcage. Soften that and then inhale. Soften the belly. Again, exhale, root lock, belly to spine. Pull the breath out. Suck the navel up underneath the ribs. Soften that, inhale for six. So three more breaths like that, or when you're ready, please lower down on an inhale. The most important feature is that the exhale is longer than the inhale. If the active portion of the exhale gets a little shorter because you're doing the Uddiyana Bandha, that's fine because the whole effect of the exhale will still be long. When you're done, we're going to inhale the knees down to the floor. And exhale at eight, move the hips back to the heels. And then relax the breath.
Let's move slowly over onto the back. Wherever you're most comfortable on your back. You may want to plug your knees in or stretch your legs out. Do what feels comfortable. Relax the breath. Close the eyes. Keep the awareness in the body. Notice the quality in the body. Do you feel any sense of lightness? Where is the awareness moving in the body? Is it more down in the feet and legs or up in the upper body? Okay, we're going to move into Tadaka Mudra variation. We're going to start with the knees bent and the heels in pretty close to your sit bones. Um, we're going to have a more chance to experiment with that Uddiyama Bandha here, with that sucking of the navel up underneath the rib cage. Keep using the root lock. Keep gathering the pelvic floor as the initiation of the exhale and hugging the belly in. And we're going to continue to have the exhale longer than the inhale. So your knees are bent, your heels are in quite close to your sit bones. As you inhale in six, raise the arms up overhead. And pause. Stay here, exhale in eight. Now keep your breath out, pull your belly button up underneath your rib cage. Then relax that, then let the breath come in. And then an exhale in eight, lower the arms down to the side. Relax the breath, we're gonna move the feet a little bit farther away from the sit bones. This time we'll do two breath cycles. Inhale six, raise the arms up overhead. Stay here and exhale for eight. Engaging the pelvic floor, hugging the belly. And then keep the breath out. Draw the navel up underneath the rib. Relax that, then inhale. Same thing again, exhale, engage the root lock, hug the belly to the spine. And then keep the breath out with Uyana Bandha. Relax it, then inhale. Eight counts to lower your arms down by your side. You can stay here if you like, or the final position will be doing the same thing. Three breaths with the legs out straight. A little bit more strenuous with the legs straight. So feel free to keep the knees bent at either one of those previous positions. Inhale, raise the arms in six. Exhale for eight. Root lock, belly to spine. And then hold the breath out. Pull the navel up underneath the rib. Relax back and inhale. Two more times like that, please.
And at eight, eight counts, lower your arms down to your side. And relax your back. Let the arms and legs come a little bit wider. If you need to hug the knees into the chest, feel free to do that. Relax the breath. Observe, please. Can you identify where you feel energy moving in the body? Where is your attention drawn? We're going to bring the knees into the chest. And now prepare for a twist. Let's place straighten the left leg out along the floor. We're going to keep the right knee bent into the chest. We're going into a twist for six breaths. Um, inhale for six and exhale for eight. Take the left hand on the right knee. And in eight counts, slowly bring your knee across the body and over towards the floor on the left. Turn the face to the right, relax the right shoulder and stay here. Inhale for six. Pause and exhale for eight. And pause. Inhale six. Pause, and exhale, eight. Pause, inhale, six. Pause, and exhale, eight. And pause. Do three more breaths like that on your own, please. Inhale and bring both knees into your chest. Relax the breath for a moment. We'll straighten the right leg out and rest the right hand on the left knee. Using a long exhale, slowly bring the knee over towards the floor on the right. Turn the head to the left, relax the left shoulder. Begin six breaths. Inhale for six. Pause for two, and exhale for eight. Pause for two. Do five more breaths like that on your own. Exhale longer than inhale.
When you're done with those breaths, come onto your back. Hug both knees into your chest. One hand resting on each knee. Relax the neck and shoulders. Close your eyes, relax your face. Relax your feet. Relax the breath for a moment. And we'll begin Apanasana for six repetitions. Inhale six, exhale eight. Inhale, let the belly soften as the knees move out away from the chest. Six counts. Pause for two. And then eight counts. Exhale, slowly hug the knees back in. Feel the belly hug towards the spine. Hold the breath out for two. Inhale, six. Float the knees away. Pause. Exhale, eight. Hug the belly in, hug the knees in. Pause for two. Inhale, six. Pause, two. And exhale, eight. Pause two. Three more repetitions on your own. Exhale longer than inhale. When you're ready, we're moving into Shavasana. Please make yourself comfortable with your legs outstretched. Feet separated about as wide as your mat. Arms wide, palms up. Support behind the head if you like. Cover yourself up, be warm and comfortable. If you don't need a cover on you today, um, don't use it, and I'll tell you why in a moment. If you need one to stay warm, then please do. Shavasana, letting the body release and soften. The reason I'm suggesting to skip the blanket if you're not cold this morning is that sometimes we use a blanket to help us feel more grounded. Um, it can help reduce vata. Um, but today I'd like you to be able to access the sense of lightness that we've been cultivating in the practice. So if you're warm enough without a blanket, um, rest without one. And please observe, in addition to the sense of softening into gravity, do you have some sense of the body being light here? The breath is now relaxed, breathing on its own. Attention in the body. Please observe the effect of the Udana practice.
Feel the body. Notice the sensations in the body. Gently lengthen your breath. Notice the breath coming in and the belly gradually softening as the breath comes in. And with the exhale, just relax. And again, we'll inhale and raise the arms up overhead and begin a long stretch, lengthening yourself from your fingertips down to your toes. And as you're ready, relaxing that stretch, turn to your right side and hug your knees to your chest. And come up slowly to a seated position. We'll do another pranayama. So again, be sure that you have a good comfortable seat. In this pranayama, we'll continue with the idea of keeping the exhale longer than the inhale. We're gradually going to move it more and more, um, extremely longer than the inhale um, over the course of several breaths. Again, I'd like you to think of the inhale simply as being an inflow of breath that allows the belly to soften, and the exhale as being a hug of the belly towards the spine. If you want to and, um, include the root lock, gathering and lifting the pelvic floor as part of the exhale, feel free to do that um, at your discretion. I don't want you to be um, distracted by that, but if you have that facility, you can start your exhale at the pelvic floor. If not, you can begin the exhale by hugging the belly. Throughout this practice, the inhale will remain at six counts and will gradually inc increase the length of the exhale. We're also going to be pausing. I will guide you through the entire pranayama. Use a gentle ujjayi. Breathe through the nose. Begin by inhaling for six. Pausing for two and exhaling for six, hugging the belly into the spine. Pause for two. Do two more breaths like that. Inhale for six. Pause two and exhale for six. Hug the belly in. Pause for two. Inhale six. Pause two, and exhale six. Pause two. Inhale for six. So we're now going to increase the exhale. Exhale to eight. And pause for two. Inhale six. Pause two. And exhale, eight. Pause for two. Again, like that. Inhale, six. Pause two. And exhale, eight. For the next three breaths, inhale, six, and exhale, uh, ten. So inhale for six. Pause two, exhale for 10. You have to slow down the flow of the breath. Hold two, inhale six. Hold two, and exhale for 10. Hold for two, again like that, inhale six. Hold two, and exhale ten. Hold two, increasing the exhale to twelve. Inhale for six. Hold two, exhale in twelve counts, but move very slowly.
hold for two. Inhale, six. Pause, two. Exhale, and 12. Hold for two. Inhale, six. Hold two, and exhale, 12. Do three more breaths like that. Inhaling for six, exhaling for 12. Inhale for six, no hold this time, and drop it down to 10 second exhale. Two more like that, dropping the hold. Inhale for six, exhale 10. Inhale six, Exhale, 10. Dropping the exhale down to eight for the next three. Inhale, six. Exhale, eight. Inhale, six. And exhale, eight. Once more like that, inhale six. And exhale eight. The last three breaths, inhale and exhale both six, please. And when you're done, relax the breath. We'll take a brief period of silence here to absorb the effect, to observe the effect. Notice if you can feel that sense of lightness or that sense of rising energy.
Yoga Sutra 339 says that when we master, when one masters, and one masters by having an intense meditation over some period of time, not just one class period, but a long-term practice, interaction with, with Udana practice, will give one the capacity to levitate, um, which is usually the result of um, the spirit being uplifted, that great faith develops. And this mastery of Udana energy also gives us the ability to rise above, rise above the um, heaviness of tamas, rise above things that may pull us down, um, get to become admired in worldly affairs, or um, pulled down into mudslinging, or just feeling heavy and depressed and sad and weighed down can help us rise above tamas, can also help us rise above rajas, anything that might be irritating, pricking. The sutra talks about a thorn, but anything that provokes pain. We can rise above both rajas and tamas by nourishing this udana energy and Hopefully you can get a taste, at least, of that sense of being uplifted from the practice we just did. Please open your eyes. Namaste. The line from Stevie Nicks's um, song, Landslide, um, may the child in my heart rise above. Um, that has been in my mind a lot this week as I considered this sutra. Um, when you think of may the child in my heart, may the sattvic nature in my heart rise above all the worldly woes. And when we say namaste, um, it's that part of ourselves that we're acknowledging and sending out to greet that in the others here. Namaste. Thank you.